Hey, happy Thanksgiving 2017. We are getting ready to cook a 23 pound turkey and we're going to do it in the Big Bad Dutch oven. I just thought I'd show you the setup real quick. We were already rocking and rolling this morning. It's uh, oh, about 6.30 in the morning and this thing needs to cook oh in the five and a half, six hour range would be great. So I'm showing you my setup here. Um, when I'm just using one oven, I use my uh, Camp Chef uh, stove. Um, I have a like a stainless steel plate here on this side, and I use this side to get my charcoal going. So as you can see, I got a flame going underneath the uh, chimney, and I have 20 pieces of charcoal in there. And we can turn this off now because that charcoal is lit, and it's doing really well. I have already done 20 pieces of charcoal. I have them underneath the Dutch oven, just kind of getting it warmed up. And I'm about to go get the bird and set it in and get it prepped. And then this charcoal will be ready to go on top of the lid. And that's how we heat the Dutch oven. And we're gonna be having to feed charcoal to this thing all day. So I have, uh, here's the plan. I'm gonna set the bird in there. We're gonna oil it up. I'm just putting some uh, canola oil on it just to help it brown a little bit. Um, I use uh, chicken broth. To, uh, actually I got two containers of chicken broth for this Dutch oven today um, where we just put a little bit of seasoning in it and uh, we're gonna put a little rum in it and this is what I call drunk turkey so I'm putting you up in the stand here real quick um, I'm gonna put one container of chicken broth in the Dutch oven before I put the bird in and you can use whatever you want this is just organic chicken broth, no big deal. And this uh, turkey will be the best you've ever had. If you get an opportunity to Dutch oven a turkey, highly recommend it. If you've got smaller ovens, you don't have a big oven like this to do a full turkey, doing turkey breast or something in a smaller oven, the procedure, just to say, okay, I'm gonna go get the bird. It's a big one. Yeah, here it is, here it is, here it is. We're gonna set her in the oven. Plenty of room. Nice. Okay, now we're gonna, uh, should've got me a paper towel. It's all right, we got shop towels. We're gonna put a little oil in on top of it. Again, that'll help it brown a little bit. You wanna keep it as perfectly centered as you can to keep it off the sides of the oven. We're just going to rub this in by hand, all over, going to get messy, isn't that the way it works, so, okay, she's good to go, now, hang on, I got to wipe this oil off my hands or I won't be able to hold anything, sticky, okay, let's put the other chicken broth in there, Again, it's a big oven, so it's going to need two containers. If you have a smaller oven, one's usually good for like how a 12 or 14 inch Dutch oven. I'm at the bottom of this bird, so I'm going to stop there. All right. Um, whatever seasonings you'd like to put in on top of yours, it's good to go. Um, we're just using some... Uh, it's kind of a seasoned garlic salt with some parsley and whatever. Give it some flavor on the uh, skin there. It's mostly going to cook off anyway, so you can't go too crazy here. And now for the secret. It's not so secret. We're gonna get the turkey drunk today. I like cooking with rum. It has a, it just has just a little bit of flavor to it. Don't, you don't need to get real crazy with this, but there we go. <clears throat> now, hang on just a second. I gotta go get the lid. It is too heavy to pack in here with the lid on it.
Even the lid is heavy. Okay, so there's the lid. Now we're going to dump the charcoal on top. Do it quickly. Just go bam! Like that. And then we'll talk a little bit about how much charcoal that's uh, people's number one question. But you know what? Well, let's just, yeah, let's do this and then we'll heat up another batch. So what's the rule of thumb about charcoal? Well, everybody has their own theory. And if you want just some place to start, uh, take a Dutch oven, let's say you have a 12, and how many charcoals is that? Because you're kind of always shooting for about 350 degrees, right? Well, times two. So if you have a 12-inch oven, times two is 24, and then plus a couple, right? So maybe 26, 28 will get you in the ballpark. And then evenly space them. So then the next question is, how many on top, how many on the bottom? Well, it depends on what you're cooking. This is also a deep oven, right? So a standard oven might be yay high. A deep oven, you got more to heat. This is 96 pounds of cast iron in the oven and the lid. So it's going to take a little extra. So this being a 17-inch oven, two times that would be what, like 34? So I started off with 40 charcoals. And right now I put 20 below and 20 above. But I've got to get this oven up to temperature, so that's why I did what I did. When I'm said and done, we're going to run about 35% of my charcoal on the bottom and about 65 on the top, because we don't want to burn the bottom. I am cooking the bird on a trivet. There is a trivet in the bottom, so I'm not sitting right on the cast iron. I'm sitting on a trivet. So about 35% of the charcoal go on the bottom and 65 on the top. Now, if you're doing soup or stew or something that is, you don't have to worry about burning, then maybe closer to 50-50 or 45-55. 45 on the bottom, 55 on the top. Because it's not going to burn if it's like liquid, right? If it's soup or stew or something like that. If it's a cake or if you uh, get good and do dump cakes and stuff like that, um, you want to be pretty conservative on the bottom and put most of yours on the top. So I would recommend starting off at about 30 on the bottom, 30%, and 70% on the top, because it'll burn easily. You've got a cake or something that's stuck right to the cast iron. I highly recommend a pair of tongs like this. I have a couple different kinds. If I ever see them somewhere, I grab them. I've given a few of these away over time. People go, where did you get those? You know, I get them at yard sales or whatever. But they're really great for picking these. Um, I can't believe people try to do this without a pair of these. But uh, I just have had these for so long. That's what I do. Uh, and they actually will just kind of sit right there. So I will have to feed this throughout the day now. So I'm kind of committed to this. Uh, I'm going to have to use my chimney. I'll throw another 20 briquettes in there. Light the fire. Get them going. It only takes about five minutes or so and I can get the next set of briquettes done. I will dump them on the top and then I will move them. And I'll start like, I'll take one off the top and slide it in underneath and poke it in there. And while I'm poking the old ones towards the center. So if I have 20 that I throw in there, I'll probably put you know six or seven of them down below and poke them in and then distribute the other ones. And just let these go. So all day long, these will just be piling up. They'll burn down to nothing, they'll leave the ash. But just leave them there, and uh, at the end of the, of the cook cycle, when the turkey's done, you'll take the lid off and dump it out. Be careful where you put the ashes. Don't dump them in your garbage can, burn your house down. Um, a metal container, or dump them outside in your garden, or something like that. Um, that'll be fine. So, I'll, uh, Let me get you off the stand here real quick. I'll just show you some of the other tips and tricks, and then we'll let you let this thing cook, and we'll pop back in there. So... I have one of these, uh, what I think they call them, action packer totes, and I keep my open bags of charcoal in them. This, I've had this thing for years. The charcoal stays in real good shape in it. I don't fill it all the way up because I keep my tools and my chimney in there. Um, I'll tell you a couple little tips and tricks on chimneys. 
they use aluminum pop rivets to pop rivet these things together. I have, oh, I don't know, three or four of these things. Every one of them has burnt the pop rivets out of it. So I end up coming back in, as you can see, and I spot weld the uh, rack that's in the bottom of this thing. I just take my MIG welder and just hit it a few times. And because, again, the aluminum pop rivets have all burned away. And right in the middle of cooking, too. Isn't that always the case? So I do have a spare. If we go for some big outing where I'm doing a lot of Dutch oven cooking, I'll actually bring a couple of these. Sometimes I just loan them out. Um, I do have a friend that uh, goes to some of the events and makes lid lifters. And I'm going to set this here so I can get a good shot of it. It's a lid lifter. It's made out of a horseshoe. And he'll make up a few of these sets and bring them to the different campouts and sell them and so forth. He always runs out. He doesn't make enough. <laughs> but obviously that lid gets really hot. So you need a lid lifter. This is another, I'll set it there. This is another lid lifter that came with a set and it's designed to go in uh, under the lid and pick it up. But uh, this one that my buddy makes is like the best. So uh, I've tried to buy another one from him, but there's been other people there that don't have any and they really wanted one, so I've always said, well, go ahead and he'll have extras one day. And I'll get another one from him, but he's never had extras because <laughs> when he breaks them out, they're like gone in 60 seconds kind of thing. But the excellent design, and uh, I can even get this monster lid off with this lid lifter. I've seen people use channel locks and stuff for it, but, you know, that just screws up your oven. These things will last forever if you take good care of them. I don't want to use that on it, so... Um, I did pick up an extra bag of charcoal because it's going to be a long day. Um, I'll probably use everything that's in there. So, uh, I figured probably 10, somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds of charcoal to get through my day today. So, all right. So I'm going to stop here. We'll reconvene. It's starting to get daylight outside right now. So it must be about seven o'clock and which is a good time because I wanted to pull this around noon so that's 8 9 10 11 12 so it'll go about five to five and a half hours from now and i think that'll be good so uh 23 pounds and five and a half hours and uh got to babysit the uh, dutch oven today but that's all right i'm at the shop i got plenty to do so see you uh in about five or hours or so but for you to be about two seconds Thought I'd jump in here and just show you how I uh, like charcoal because we didn't really go through that that well. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to turn on my stove and then turn the flame all the way up. Kind of shoots up the chimney. I'm going to load about 20 pieces of charcoal in here. I do just count them one or two at a time. It's a process. Four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. And 20 is about a good place to stop as far as getting them started in the chimney. I mean, there's room to put more of them in there, but by the time you get the top ones lit, if you put more than 20 in there, the bottom ones are half burned up. So you're kind of wasting the time a little bit. Uh, I've also seen people, you know, just put paper together and so forth to and put some charcoal on it and try to light their charcoal that way but gosh it takes it forever and this is so quick and they call it a chimney and you can kind of see why can you see the flame popping up through all that i don't want to burn my camera up get up here a little bit so you can see the sparks flying around here a little bit too so if you're doing this in the summertime out in camp so be careful of 
the sparks probably different charcoal reacts differently but keep your eyes on things so we're going to do these until that you can see that the top ones are starting to turn white on the corner um, branded charcoal um, I don't know across the country what different brands around here we have a, a Kingsford plant that makes Kingsford charcoal I would always say that's probably the best but for doing this I've never used it. even the cheap charcoal I've never used when it didn't work well so I uh, usually buy what's on sale it doesn't really matter to me I bought I was into our local grocery store and bought their signature brand yesterday because it was on sale after I looked in there and I go well <laughs> that might be enough to do it but you don't want to be caught on a Thanksgiving day with no grocery stores open and not be able to replenish the charcoal supply so you can see we got a really good fire going in there so what I could probably do right now is shut the burner off and then that will uh, take the pressure off the bottom charcoal it won't burn them so hard and let the top ones go so let's turn that burner off I do love this style of stove this is a whoops I think I went the wrong way there we go now it's off this is a Camp Chef Explorer um, I've had it a number of years it comes in a bag so I've got it laying over here so and you can see I use it and it's got a bunch of charcoal mess in there um, comes in a bag the legs come off it does have a wind backsplash I just have it sitting over here because it's not windy in my shop so this is the backsplash got hinges on it for the sides and it just sets on the back and then on the sides but if you're cooking outside you really want that so you can see those things are started pretty good as long as the top ones are already starting to turn white you're good to go so that didn't take this video's only been running for just about four minutes so and these things are ready so um three to four minutes for 20 bits of charcoal is pretty good i'm gonna put you back in a stand and uh, just show you one more time how to just what i call feed the coals and i'm doing this uh, a little extra coals just because of the size of this oven and making sure that it gets up to temperature quickly because uh you know five and a half hours of cooking is not too long for the size of this bird so here we go do it quick don't hesitate And then we just use the tongs, and the big deal is to spread that heat around. So we're just going to go around the edge, and where there's a little bit of room, we'll set a charcoal. And just even it out. Nice, even heat. And we'll take a few of these and slide them underneath. My little uh, stainless steel pan there doesn't leave me a lot of room, but... I got room on four corners just to slide a piece of charcoal in there, so we'll do that. Get in there! And I'm going to take off for about an hour or so, so that's why I thought I'd feed this thing now and make sure we get this thing off to a good start. Nice and even. Yeah, that's going to be great. There. That's the update. And then we'll check back uh, later today when we're ready to uh, get that bird out of there. Okay, it's time to have a look in there. It's uh, been uh, probably about three hours, 45 minutes. This turkey been cooking. We're going to knock the uh, ashes away from the edge. Because we're going to pull the lid for the first time you don't want to pull the lid too often because you lose a lot of heat out there so resist that a little bit but uh, with about two hours to go um, we need to see if we're where we're at um, I've been keeping up with the charcoal pretty good but uh, this quick little look will let us know if we need to 
keep on the charcoal routine or if we can start letting it cool off a little bit. Um, in another hour, we'll check uh, internal temperature of the bird itself. So let's pull the lid. It's a heavy one. Now I think we're looking real good. It's starting to brown just a little bit. But we didn't lose much heat. I think we're going to stay the course here. I don't think I have to feed it quite so hard as far as charcoal is concerned. So um, I've been keeping pouring the coals to it, no pun intended. But I think we can uh, kind of relax that a little bit. So uh, I think we'll just let this cook for another hour. I'll make another batch. Maybe this time, maybe uh, I've been throwing about. 15 to 20 coals on it every, I'm not really timing it, 40 minutes or something when they burn off. And how I distribute them is I take the old coals and push them out to the edge, dump the new ones in the middle and just keep working them. And then I take uh, at least four uh, of the new coals and shove them in underneath on the four corners um, and just pushing the old ones towards the center. Um, this oven's got stubby little legs on it. And they're really wide, they're like angle iron, but they're cast into the oven, so they're a little hard to get around if the legs happen to line up with the corners of my stainless pan down there, but uh, it works out just fine. Nothing to be alarmed about. I think she's cooking good. Um, I think I can just back the heat off a little bit, not keep pouring it to it, and everything will be fine. And I'll wait till, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes before meal time to pack this over to where we're eating today and uh, so it'll be served hot that's the goal catch you in a little bit well here we are it's quarter after 12 I didn't put any more uh, charcoal on it when we inspected this a little while ago hour or so ago it was a uh, it was doing well so we just let it go. Let's see what we got. We're almost to a finished bird here. Y'all. Look at that. Pretty happy. Looks good. Looks good. So she's only got about 20 more minutes or so. So uh, we're going to wrap this video up. I got to make a phone call, get someone to come over and help me load this up. Because a 96-pound oven with a 23-pound bird and some liquid in there puts that thing at uh, about 125 pounds. And that ain't going to make it. we got to get that thing loaded in my van, haul it over, start cutting her up. So that's the uh, Dutch oven drunk turkey for Thanksgiving 2017. Thanks for watching, comment, and subscribe, and come on back for some more interesting videos. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays to everybody. We'll catch you next time.